starting yeah i'm starting okay okay you turn very good morning to everyone present here it's great yes take it to meta could very good morning to everyone present here it's great pleasure to extend warm welcome on behalf of department of civil engineering to the dignitaries present here and all the participants joined us with one week webinar on sustainable payment current research and practices organized by department of civil engineering as a discussion today we have with us dr tikenath hod department of civil engineering and chief guest dr krishna prapunna delegate sir associate professor iit tirupati and uh, my co coordinator mr patik acharya and ms anushara so about a brief description of the program uh, i want to let you know some uh, about the program as you know roads are important modes of uh, transport in india and uh, india has a road network of, of almost 60 lakh kilometer which is the second largest in the world so major efforts has been taken underway to modernize the country's road infrastructure in order, in order to handle the increased requirement of the indian economy so the main objective of this webinar to increase knowledge of sustainability ability starting from the choose of suitable materials mainly recycled materials waste material as there is scarcity of natural resource of payment construction sustainable technology and practice in the, payment design construction preserve preservation till payment life cycles so without taking much more time now i would like to request our uh, hod sir dr tikenath to address the participants hello am i audible yes 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 sir hello yes sir yes sir this is audible yes, sir very good morning to our uh, yeah very good morning to our chief guest uh, dr uh, krishna p balgiri uh, associate professor from iit tirupati uh, other uh, faculty members available as well as to Our chief guest, we have a chief guest like uh, Professor Bilgiri, uh, who has vast experience in this field, and he has uh, done a lot of contribution in this field, and already he has served more than three years in uh, University of Arizona. So we are uh, proud to be here. Uh, to have a expert like him so he will give a lot of uh, exposure to all the participants in that field and uh, we can say that sustainability is a very vast uh, concept whenever whether it is going to road construction or uh, building construction or uh, environmental issues sustainability sustainability is a very uh, greater concept uh, like we will go for low cost uh, long and uh, less environmental impact Less emission in life cycle of the structure, 
so and cost analysis so many things comes into a picture so i will see that uh, some aspects are being covered uh, very nicely because experts uh, are here uh, to explain all the participants and uh, i am thankful to professor uh, to give his consent uh, to address all the participants who are waiting to listen him thanks sir thank you okay thank you sir and now uh, i would like to request uh, professor krishna bilgir sir to address the participants yeah <clears throat> yeah good morning everyone and i hope uh, hoping i'm clear right yeah yeah okay yes yes absolutely clear so uh, okay. very good uh, uh, good morning to everyone it is very hot, uh, heartening to note that we have a very good program that's uh, that has uh, been lined up for the next 5 uh, days uh, including on uh, the construction practices and we have uh, a very important aspect in terms of using the waste materials um and also the recent advances in in both concrete and asphalt pavements which is good which is bad is not the question here we are, we try to understand which of them can actually help this help serve the purpose that we are looking for and again one of the other things that i thought we should really uh highlight is the maintenance aspect because now you see the the government also has taken an initiative to maintain the assets that's something very important not just constructing the roads we're also maintaining them for, for the next few years and most importantly as engineers and researchers i think this is something important that you also have one of the topics on quality control so that's something important and uh, you cannot discount the uh, the fact that quality control plays a major role not just in construction but also um, in design and um, we have to be very careful when we do the job and that's how that's how we can build the uh, nation's uh, roadway network So that's the capacity building uh, measures as well. So uh, very happy uh, for IGI, IGIT, and congratulations to the entire team. Uh, and thank you very much, uh, Sujit, uh, for remembering me. Okay, and we wish the uh, institution the best. Okay, thank and you, everyone. The the, uh, the all the delegates, welcome to the program. And uh, now that you are all alumnus of IGIT, so congratulations once again. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, now I would like to request uh, uh, my co-coordinator uh, to give a vote of thanks, sir. Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. Krishna Prapurna Bilgri, sir, respected HOD, sir, and all other speakers. I would I would thank respected HOD, Dr. Tushar Kumar Nachar, for his continuous support to make this webinar successful. our course coordinator dr sujit uh, sujit kumar pradhan sir who always motivated for this kind of webinar and extended his support to make this webinar successful lastly i would thank dr krishna prapurna bilgi sir for providing his valuable time for this webinar thank you sir okay now in our session uh, meeting is closed now uh, Uh, sir now, now we start okay so before that i uh, dear participants i i want to introduce uh, dr krishna prapna bilgiri some brief uh, brief description about him so he is the associate professor in the civil and environmental engineering department uh, iit tirupati he has obtained ms and phd from arizona state university with usa His research and teaching experience include pavement material design, maintenance and rehabilitation, highway noise evaluation and modeling, sustainable and smart infrastructure. He has been involved in many national and international studies that focus on fundamental material properties and sustainable innovative solutions for adoption and mitigation strategies, strategies to enhance quality of life initiative. He has also associated with various and a uh, international journal as associate editor editorial board member such as ac stm ijpt teller and francis and many more also he has uh, received a international board member transportation research board he is also a life member and executive fellow of international road federation he is also a recipient of young scientist award from the board of international institute of noise control engineering 
He has authored many international journals, papers, peer-reviewed papers in reputed journals. He has also uh, presented his paper in uh, internationally, including USA, Sweden, Germany, Poland, Belgium. Undertaken many consultancy works. Uh, if I will go through each and uh, every achievements, award, resource. I think it will take uh, more than three or four hours. So without taking uh, much more time, now I request uh, uh, Professor Krishna Papurna Bilgirisa to present on the topics. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, huh? Sujit. And thank you, Sujit. And it was very kind. <laughs> yeah, it's all there out there. So. <laughs> Thank you very much for your kind words again, and um, welcome back to the. Can, can you hear me? Yes, sir, hear me, but uh, sir, uh, your PPT is not showing up. No, I will. I will do that. I will open it. I will do that. Okay, 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 okay. okay I, sir, I just okay. thought I'll first uh, introduce. Yeah. yeah. So uh, thank you very much once again for uh, for this small topic that we thought we should talk about. Uh, now let me share this screen. So you will see this, yeah. Now, I, if I put on the video, I think the bandwidth will reduce. So I thought I will uh, stop it for now. But when when we have questions, I think we can take it up. Everybody's clear? Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So okay. So this this is what I thought I should uh, talk about today. Um, although there are several topics that we can definitely discuss and. Uh, this probably um, is is a is a very uh, generic topic, obviously, sustainable pavement technologies. And uh, we thought we will talk about two important aspects. One is the uh, construction. So we have developed a new material that is um, that uh, serves as the Make in India mission. Okay, government's Make in India mission, and also the other aspect on the uh, asset management. So as I just mentioned in the inaugural uh, address. Now, one of the important things that we should be really taking care of is to also maintain assets, not just build and build, right? It's it's an important aspect. Otherwise, what happens is we uh, we tend to build many uh, infrastructures, but finally, at the end of the day, if you're not able to maintain it, it will simply fail, and you'll not be able to predict the failure as well. So, it's an important uh, point here that we we build and also maintain it over the design life. Okay, and uh, let's move on. So this is the presentation outline. I thought I'll uh, share with you three different things. One very generic aspect of what is sustainable pavement technology and what are the technologies out there in the field. Again, this is not a very exhaustive list, but definitely it can give you uh, some idea what we are doing and what other institutions are doing across the world. Very generic uh, outlook there. And then we'll talk about the pervious concrete uh, material that we developed in India. Uh, not just at IIT Karakpur, but we are also doing a continued program at IIT Tirupati, where I currently work. Um, and then we will also share with you some of the ideas that you can take forward as, as part of your uh, future research. Um, I know there are a lot of faculty members also joining this uh, this conference, uh, so I, I think this is something where uh, something that's important for future faculty plus the current faculty who are who are trying to do good quality research and. Uh, take the infrastructure engineering forward, right? And then we'll, we'll talk about the asset management toolkit that we have been developing uh, in conjunction with uh, Andhra Pradesh State uh, Road Development Corporation. And we will discuss something about what, what new technologies are there in the field and how are we able to utilize those. And then very importantly, uh, I thought I should also talk to you about where are we going um, with, with our own uh, uh, research area. Right, so the first thing that I thought, okay, and this is not something new to you, okay, and we, uh, most of you would have uh, seen these kinds of slides across the spectrum. Um, very importantly, when we talk about the sustainable ecosystem, so there are several facets to it. One of the things that we, we are very interested in because this conference is talking about the infrastructure, right? Um, so key infrastructure becomes one of the very important pillars for us. In the uh, in the sustainable ecosystem and and that that that's where we bring in that word called green infrastructure. 
so when you call it green so there is sustainability aspect coming and again if i ask uh, uh, the, the all the delegates that are present each of you will have at least more than one definition for sustainability and some of you will say it's about quality control some of you will say it's about material some of you, some of you will say it's about energy saving and then production um fuel uh, savings cost savings life cycle analysis and many many other things right and use of probably you know alternative materials marginal materials so infrastructure when you call it uh, sustainable then there are many facets to it it's a multi dimensional aspect then why are we doing all of these you know we are trying to enhance the quality of life across the spectrum and that that's where that's where uh, as engineers as designers then we effects then we talk about the uh, global uh, greenhouse gases the global warming potential gwp ghg and many many other things ch4 co uh, carbon monoxide and sox nox and many 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 other things so we are trying to build that and transportation plays a very key very important role in this uh, in this endeavor definitely right and why are we doing this because because we have the resources i keep saying this and uh, that's something important and we need to really make a note of this we have a very broad outlook of the country but we we don't recognize the fact that we have a very uh, strong young workforce in the country it's about 36 years that's the average age of the country right now more than 600 million people uh, less than that age so we should be able to make utilization of that resources to the fullest extent possible we need to harness that energy otherwise we will be really doing injustice to our own jobs so to promote that uh, smart solution i think we need to be use, utilizing the resources in a very judicious manner and then talk about all kinds of things that you see here for example you know i just take a pointer so it's easy to okay so you have this e service and it's there all over now that you know all of us Uh, most of us i should say have been at home over the last 6 months and we have been utilizing the e service that's something very interesting right uh, people people were always apprehensive how do i use internet banking and many other things but now it has become the way of life there's there's no other choice except to do it at home and then waste management is part of the uh, solution right smart solution and energy and water and then again when we talk about the transportation we just talked about that so you are looking at the mobility pattern public transport utilization of public transport and then have lower ghg emissions and many many other things but this particular presentation talks about green and smart road infrastructure and i say road infrastructure pavement systems okay we will not talk about the public transport as such i'm not an expert in any of these for that matter but i'm just saying right we have a lot multitude factors that can create that uh ages of the uh, larger umbrella of uh, sustainability okay so that's exactly what we will talk about in this particular presentation now to coming to this sustainable transportation infrastructure and materials research uh it's it's a global aspect okay globally people have been doing this there is nothing different that i do something and then uh, some other iit or some nit or some other educational institution most of us have a common platform and common goal of achieving that sustainability right okay what is sustainability is a question it's a debatable topic but let's let's say for the sake of saying that we are talking about a green infrastructure right and we are we are emphasizing because this conference talks about materials research uh, materials research and probably implementation to an extent we have a continued research on uh, sustainability sustainable pavement technologies and this is common across the world okay and uh, what are we trying to do we are we are trying to organize several conferences several uh, forums where we we talk to each other we understand we learn from each other about how to how do we bring in new materials innovation into our own system that's something very important and so we have a new conference coming up uh, icrs spt will it will be hosted by iit tirupati we are uh, we are the hosts and it's being uh, sponsored majorly by international conference on resource sustainability please do visit this website at your leisure um uh, icrsconf.com spt2020 actually it was supposed to be this year october unfortunately because of the situation we have postponed it to next year may uh, we are soliciting abstracts the abstracts are due november 1st please visit the website you'll get more information and one important thing is all the educational institutions in the country 
Uh, the top ones, they're all involved in this, and there'll be participants coming from at least 30 countries uh, in, this, in this conference. And we, we are very fortunate that we have several research centers and institutes co-sponsoring the event, including the uh, Central Road Research Institute, New Delhi, in India. And then we have the International Road Federation coming up, then Recycled Asphalt Foundation. We also have the Andhra State uh, Road Development Corporation and many, many other things. So I, I, we are still in, in talks with several, several organizations in the country who can, uh, who can, who can be co-sponsors for the event. And hopefully we'll be able to do that physically. Uh, otherwise we'll be missing out on something. There's one more conference that, that is also coming up on asphalt rubber because you know I've been involved in this asphalt rubber research for, uh, for the last 15 plus years now. And there are several conferences that, uh, that have been organized across the world, 2006 in the US, then nine in China, uh, um, in Germany, fifteen in uh, South Africa, uh, and many, many, uh, many, many other places. Okay, and uh, we're also trying to get uh, this conference to India probably in 2024. 2021 will be in Spain, uh, so that will be in Europe again. So there are many sponsors there, and there are a lot of conferences. Again, you know, we have also the PRB Transportation Research Board conference, and by the way, for our own conference, PRB is a co-sponsor as well. Uh, so you'll be very happy to uh, to also note that selected top selected papers will be published in a very reputed international journal called uh, Conser Resources Conservation Recycling. So the whole theme of this conference is again on resource conservation and recyclability. So please visit the website, get more um, um, information on that. We'll be we'll keep updating that. Okay, and so a lot of collaboration. Again, IIT Bhubaneswar is part of the I mentioned this. And you all can take place. So, okay, now, now let's go into the actual thing, uh, pervious concrete development and uh, implementation plan that we have had over the last uh, uh, six years now, since my joining at IIT Karakpur, when I moved from IIT Karakpur to uh, Tirupati in 2017, July, we still continue this research. So we had the first MHRD, or now it's called the Ministry of Education. So we had some funds from there uh, uh, through uh, IIT Karakpur. So we had a very good uh, group that worked on several facets of uh, um, uh, pervious concrete development, laboratory characterization. Then we went into the field demonstration uh, studies. So, um, uh, so there were several things that we did uh, across this uh, across the project. Okay, and then we will also share with you some of the things that I thought uh, you can also try in your own labs and your in your in your uh, practicing uh, field, right? So some futuristic designs that I think you should, you should take a note of that. And some construction practices that, that are very sustainable and what we have from our own experience. If there's nothing about bookish knowledge in terms of field practices, I think you keep doing the job and you start finding your own mistakes and then you start correcting those. That's something important. Okay, so why is Pervia? So we, we talked about uh, the, the smart solutions, right? So we. Uh, when you talk about the system ecosystem, one of the pillars is smart solutions. We have the solutions, but how do we promote them? How do we use them? That's something very important. So to begin to understand that pavement systems constitute about 30 to 40% of the urban fabric. So we come to the urban area now, okay, not going to the highways yet. In the urban areas where we have local streets and major arterials that connect the, the outer ring roads if there are any uh, outside the city. Okay, so if you look at this, this is a global number, 30 to 40%. Now, this could vary. In some of the cities that are really densely populated, you can also see that it could be about 50, 60, 70% also. Some of the cities in India too are, are very dense and uh, that's where the urban fabric uh, has about 30 to 40% pavement systems. Now, what are we looking at? When you look at the sustainable ecosystem as a, as a larger picture, you'll see that there are a lot of changes that can take place in the pavement systems. You start constructing, you cannot just leave it there. I told you, right? We need to be maintaining those assets. Otherwise, we'll be doing injustice. Now, you, you've spent so much money, but then if you're not able to maintain those and manage those, I think you are, you're, you're not able to do the uh, full, full uh, comprehensive work. Now, there are two aspects due to construction, not just pavement, but also other places, for example, buildings or even flyovers and many, many other things. Two things, one is the hydrological aspect, right? Wherein we have the precipitation falling, precipitation every year, annual precipitation that's there. Now, 
don't you think there will be a change because of this of course yes because you know when you have precipitation heavy rain there is lot of scope for uh, water to run off surface run off that that's the flash floods now there could be a chance where that can also go down the pavement section or let's say for the sake of saying ground right the ground water recharge also can take place now if you start constructing pervious i'm sorry impervious membranes okay then what happens it'll simply block the water to go downwards or percolation so what we should be doing we should have a pervious ground that's very important i'm not talking about pervious concrete yet i'm just saying you need to have a very beautiful pervious ground that can take care of the ground water recharge okay and the other thing is the temperature so if you start building concrete jungles all over the place let's say you have buildings and then roads built with materials that are uh, very uh, that can store heat and then release it when not required then you also see that there is a change in the temperature in the surrounding environment and so the ambient temperature changes now some of you who are familiar with this so you are, some of you are staying on campus then when you when you go out of your campus educational institution for that matter what you see you see a sudden change in the temperature right it is not ergonomically happy for you you will not feel happy when you go out of your campus so you start you want to stay back and then be be with nature be with trees that that brings down the temperature and that's not a new phenomenon okay and one of the other things that you should also be probably you're familiar is the urban heat island effect when you move from your rural area let's say from the rural roads or the uh, the uh, the villages towards the city you start feeling that heat it's not just the not just the emissions coming out of vehicles it's also the temperature that is stored within the which in within the structures that we have including the pavements right so that phenomenon where there is a temperature differential between the rural setup and the urban areas is called urban heat island urban heat island so in in the urban heat island phenomenon what we do what we see is it's about 3 to 5 celsius difference between the urban and the rural setup so what we would like to create is to create a rural setup within the urban areas so so what we are trying to do is to have better recharge better ground water recharge and uh, and reduce runoff when there is precipitation taking place and you also have the uh, reduced uh recharge also coming from the uh when you when you don't have concrete jungles right so the whole idea here is we are trying to understand that we want to have a pervious natural ground fabric so that you can have better recharge so you have your water that percolates downwards now on the other hand we just discussed it have all of the construction all of the place it could be concrete it could be it could be asphalt it could be even unpaved roads we have an impervious fabric then you will actually see that there is increased runoff reduced recharge right so we would like to create something like this and this is a very classical uh, uh, relationship between runoff and time and it's not our own relationship it's a global relationship that has been found um you would like to see a pre urbanization curve such as this the red color one okay even after you have constructed buildings roads and many not and many other things right so you want to have this kind of a curve with urbanization so what how do we do that how do we accomplish that task so you have a dense mixture dense system and that is highly impervious so you're not allowing any water to percolate and it also is a very dense thermal mass that stores heat and releases when not required what you should be doing is to come up with some solutions that are pervious in nature or permeable in nature so it could be even the unpaved roads the permeable sections also can help us do that job it doesn't have to be only concrete even porous asphalt can do that job right so we are trying to go into the details of not compromising with durability but at the same time um, also have the pervious nature so you can recharge the ground water okay that's where that's where the Uh, thing lies wherein you come up with some solutions that are smart and again this holds good only if you have 
a compromise on the strength parameters. This is a you might have a question. So you're going for a pervious ground. Don't you think the strength will reduce? Definitely. There is no doubt about that. So we have to come up with some smart solution, which is what I told you. We'll share with you some futuristic designs wherein we will say that we will not compromise on strength quality also. We will have enough permeability to recharge groundwater. At the same time, we will also have a very strong material, durable material that lasts uh, during its entire design life. It could be 15, 20, 25, 35 years, right? Okay. So one solution definitely is pervious concrete. And, it's, uh, and we have found based on several studies across the world and also our own uh, uh, research uh, work is that it's a multi-beneficial material and it targets several facets as you can see here, right? We talked about this, it reduces that runoff quantity. Essentially what it does when there is huge amount of precipitation, it simply goes down the ground and then helps recharge. It also helps improve water quality. So if you're digging a bore well, I think you should be able to get it right away. So that's the whole idea, you know, we, we are trying to understand that we don't want to simply have a, uh, an impermeable membrane and then re reduce the chances of getting a bore well at shallow depths. That's something important. Okay, and then one of the other things that we just discussed is the urban heat island phenomenon. As you can see in this plot or in this, in this figure there down, you have the downtown or what we call the CBD, Central Business District, right? And when you go from your rural or let's say a campus for that matter, you go towards the city, you start seeing that there is a temperature differential between your own rural setup or the campus towards the city and the city. So that's the temperature. So that is what we call the UHI effect. And one of the advantages that we have seen with this previous concrete material, one benefit definitely is to reduce that UHI effect. How do we do that? We'll share with you more details in the coming slides. Now it also provides a good riding surface. How is that possible? You see, whenever you have an open graded structure or a gap graded structure, some of you are familiar, there are three kinds of gradations. Aggregate gradation, aggregate skeletal structure, one is the dense graded. That's, that is a very common thing. You, it's a BC layer for that matter. Okay. Now that is or, in, or a concrete surface, very coarse. They're all very good. They're very durable, dense, nicely packed, no doubt. But have you observed that over time, it starts to get so smoothened that it'll start to skid. So that skid resistance starts to decrease. So what we would like to see is have a good writing surface, provide that good skid resistance offered by the material over time. Not just seeing in the beginning, but over time, over its entire design period, we would like to see that it provides that good. And that can be achieved with open texture. We call that open texture. The aggregates are sticking up. Okay, that's what we call it. So it's an open grade structure and this Pervious concrete is nothing different. It is it is an open graded slash gap graded. I will share with you how how how, how do you manufacture this as an open grade or gap graded structure? Okay, so multi beneficial so at least four, and then there are other studies that have uh, come up wherein they say that uh, because of the high amount of air pockets in this kind of a material, we can also expect that the noise emanating from these sections are also lower. It's a quieter material. And that comes from the fact that the interconnectivity of the pore structure exists. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, and then when you look at this temperature differential, right? That is about the groundwater recharge. And then we talked about the UHI. So you see, it's not a new thing. It's there in Delhi, Calcutta, Bangalore, many, many other cities have experienced this. And I'm sure you people have experienced also. You don't have to look at the newspaper, you can feel it. It's something that you experience. Right, and if you look at the temperature differential between two different pavement types, a black topping versus a white topping. Obviously, what happens with the black top, because it, can, it is black color on the surface, it simply starts to absorb heat. But there are good things with it also. I'm not discounting the fact, we, we are just talking about the temperature here. So if it's a white topping, the temperature is much reduced in the thermal mass because it's reflective, right? It's, it's white color, so it reflects back. So obviously you people have, would, would wear light colored clothes during summer and dark colored during winter, 
So that's what we are talking in, in terms of payments as well. So these are the actual measured values at IIT Kharagpur when we check for the te pavement temperatures, right? In Kharagpur, many some of you would have visited this place or have been living there. So you see, the, the pavement temperatures can go until about 73, 75 also, with the ambient temperature, base temperature being about 50, 55 during summer, with sultry climate there, right? So concrete by far has been about 18 Celsius lower than the asphalt concrete. That's the surface temperature that we measured. Okay, this is the actual measurement that we did. And then we also did some work in the laboratory to understand the turbine heat iron I just mentioned to you. How do we check for this? You conduct thermophysical properties, experiments such as specific heat capacity, thermal conductivity. I'm sure you can try it. So this is one of the other things that you people want to try as part of your research. Which kind of material uh, has better thermal conductivity, better specific heat capacity, uh, a good amount of emissivity, better albedo. So these are some of the terms that, that, that you might want to look at when you, uh, when, you go, when you are trying to understand the thermophysical properties. So this was the first uh, uh, notice that was given to the uh, Construction World magazine where we started to do our own work, IIT um, Karakpur, where we started to develop our pervious concrete uh, material. Okay, now what is pervious concrete? So we talked about what solutions, what benefits does that material offer. Now, what it is, that's very important, right? It's a, it's a special type of concrete. Now, again, you see, when we say special type, there should be something special about it, some unique feature, right? And we still go with the same ingredients, and I'll be, I'll be showing you another slide. You'll also see that uh, it, it's not a sophisticated equipment that you need to use. It's just, an, it's just an addition of a, a new material or probably a material that is known to you but have not been using for conventional uh, sections. For example, why is it special? Because it has interconnected pore structure. Okay. So interconnected pore structure. And uh, so it's a special material. And it has, you see there, there are two different colors that are there. One is a solid material, which is gray in color. And that is the aggregates. They are the aggregates that are coated with cement paste. Okay, that we put it in color. Now again, please understand that this, these images that you're seeing are the actual images that have been taken from X-ray microtomography and image, images, scanned images. So these are actual numbers, actual pictures that, that have been taken. We, we didn't create a graphic. Please understand that. Okay, so you, you see that there are some green colored uh, schematic and that's the interconnected pores. They are the interconnected pores and which are the ones that will help us have the water percolate through that conduit. That's what it is. So we had 100,000 images. Okay, and we had to reduce it to a finite number so that so we could analyze. So, well, so one, of our, one of our past students, Dr. Anush, who is now a faculty at IIT Bhuvaneshwar, he did this job for his PhD and we found that Yes, there exists that interconnectivity between the pore network. And that, that, that gave us confidence that there is something new with this material, right? Okay, and another schematic that you can see here, you see, one other question that people ask us, because it is highly porous, so the numbers are as follows. You look at the porosity of this material, it's about 20 to 40%. That's the porosity, it's a very high porous, highly porous material, right? When you look at your own porous asphalt also, it can be anywhere between 16 and 22 percent. Look at the dense graded asphalt, dense graded bituminous mixture, it's anywhere between 3 and 7 percent. If you go to the field, it'll start with 9 and it starts to get reduced because of the surface. If you look at the gap graded structure, it's anywhere between 11 and 15 percent. It could be even 17 percent to start with starts to reduce. The porous or open graded structure, they have to be at least 18 to 20 percent. And this material we can create with 40 percent porosity. The repercussion of producing such a material with very high porosity is you're trying to compromise on the strength properties. Plus, there is very high scope for it to get clogged. Those pores that are available with us, they'll all get clogged. Why? Because it is it, it is porous. 
and if it is interconnected then the, the, the material can also go through that conduit not just liquid but also some semi solid and solid particles can start to settle down now what we have found from our own image is that the top portion only gets clogged so one of the futuristic designs that you can think of you see let's say you have a 150 mm thick section and it only gets clogged the the top most 1 inch so if i'm starting to compact this root so you have a mold you prepare this concrete in three layers let's say for this concrete and then you come up to the last layer where you're trying to use a tamping rod to compact you'll start seeing that only the top layer gets clogged that's exactly what we found with our own images as well so if you can create a composite structure one structure below and then the other structure above what you can do over time is let's say this gets clogged there are two ways of uh, maintaining this one you can use a vacuum cleaner and it's a very uh, healthy practice every 3 months or every 6 months is a vacuum cleaner you start cleaning up the surface second way is to have this composite structure the top layer gets removed every 3 years that is the advantage of this kind of a uh, design if you have a composite structure one below one above you build a very thick structure that gives you uh, the strength that you desire design and then the top layer which is the surface wearing course that's a possibility so that is a futuristic design please understand that okay so we have this top layer that can get clogged so we remove that and replace okay so clogging takes place in the top so that is what you see here blue color ones okay and very important characteristic that's why it's it's a special material it has no or limited fines and it is built here it is so production of this material no different than your conventional concrete right you see ingredients are there aggregate size anywhere between 4.75 and 19 mm now if you go below 4.75 what happens so you created this material using it's a 20 to 25 30 40% porosity and suddenly you start putting the smaller sieve sizes less than 4.75 mm what happens you are clogging the pores yourself before even you left it for traffic so you are yourself clogging it right so you are you are designing it to get clogged so so now the other question that people ask us let's say we we stop it at 4.75 what happens to the strength yeah strength gets reduced i told you in the beginning you have a compromise on that now to account for that there are a few studies that we have seen that you can go slightly below this could be 2.36 mm that enhances the strength properties but still sticks to the definition of pervious concrete for example nrmc a national uh, uh, ready mix concrete association and the american concrete institute they say that the definition of pervious concrete is that material which has a minimum of 15% porosity don't create a 40% porosity compromise on that go ahead with 15 to 20% and then you can probably go slightly below this to enhance the strength now now let's talk about the the uh, the major parameters okay we have definitely aggregates they have to be bound by cement paste so there is water cementation there is water cement ratio there is water cement ratio there is cement to aggregate ratio and then there are many other uh, uh, items such as supplementary cementitious materials that could be used in replacement of cement that is also possible you can do that you know, silica fume has been used fly ash has been used and then there are other modifiers additives that also have been used in fact we have also tried it is the rubber to enhance the properties to an extent you can use these kind of materials now the only thing is you please be you i'm sure you're familiar with this these are the materials that require some time for it to obtain the desired strengths so that if you are able to wait on it please go ahead you can do more research in this a lot of work has to be done fly ash fiber reinforced rubber modification polymer okay latex silica few many many other things but essentially you still have the same thing aggregates not defined particles you stop it here okay plus you have the water and add mixtures that you are using so that the material becomes workable for you 
and it coats all of the aggregates, right? You need a cement paste, obviously, to create that mort. Then you have these cementitious materials that you could probably use. It's a good practice so that you can reduce the amount, you can reduce the cost of the material and also reduce the amount of cement, both and one, at one go. So that gives you the pervious concrete. Now, we have also used admixtures and superplasticizers, right, to, uh, to create this viscosity modification and also reduce, so water reducing, so that you have a very quick rate of hydration. You can also start using curing compound to cure the material. Now, going to this, where, where do we apply pervious concrete? You can go ahead with low to medium volume roads at this point of time. Across the world, they are not using pervious concrete on highways. At least the main, car main carriageway or the main line, you can still use it in the shoulders. It gives a very good drainage, right? So you can use it here. Only catch, please make sure that you're able to maintain this. You have to frequently maintain it. Otherwise, you'll be uh, uh, your design will fail. You can definitely use in pedestrian walkway, and we have done that. I'll show you some demonstration sections. We have also done a parking lot in Tirupati recently, about two years ago. It's still existent. It's being used by cars and JCB also for that matter. We, have, we can use it in medians. If you have colored aggregates in your in the vicinity, please go ahead, use that and create the pervious concrete. You can also create pervious concrete blocks. Okay, and then definitely low volume roads, local streets, small uh, uh, arterials, minor arter arterials for that matter, and then definitely in your parking area, residential localities. If you have a township, you can do that. In fact, we are, we are going to do a small township very soon near Tirupati. We were supposed to do it, but because of the situation, we are not. So we are, we are getting some uh, good projects to, to, uh, to enhance our own experience. Okay. Now, benefits discussed heavily before. So one major thing I thought I'll explain or discuss with you is you don't definitely need a side drain. So that side drain cost can be reduced if you have a pervious concrete layer on top of a very strong or it could be a granular layer. You can have a strong layer also below. Only thing is you'll have to provide side, provide side drains here so that you can collect water. Otherwise, the, there will be no chance for the water to percolate downwards. Ideally, what we expect that you have a pervious concrete surface bearing course and then a semi permeable membrane that goes down straight to the subgrade. So you can eliminate the side drains if you want to. That's, that's major advantage, right? And then you can see a picture here. This is a pervious concrete. Take an actual picture, by the way. Pervious concrete and then adjacent abutted by um, asphalt concrete, bituminous layer. You see, there is water stagnation, right? And when we discuss all of these, good skid resistance, very similar to porous asphalt, no doubt about that, open graded structure, reduced water spraying effect, so you have that visibility, better visibility when you are riding. There is a speculation that it is also less noisier, okay, if you talk about the tire pavement noise, but then a lot of studies have to be conducted to ascertain that that's correct. Again, we talk about environmental, you can increase ground water, reduce erosion, reduce flash floods, reduce first flush. Plus, if you are talking about the materials that you use, alternative materials, you can probably start using fly ash. You can start using rubber. So that reduces the burden on the environment. You don't simply burn off the tires uh, in the field. So that's an environmental stewardship that we talk about. And then you talk about the societal impact. It reduces the UHI effect. Urban heat island. We talked about this, right? So better la urban land use. So you're able to create larger area for your own pervious concrete instead uh, of uh, the, the unlike the conventional pavement structures where you have to create the side drain. So you lose some amount, right? Land space can be util well utilized in this case. Okay. Now, if you want to understand more about the pervious concrete, because I don't want to take much time on this, you can actually see that there were two state of the arts that we produced. Okay. One in 2016, you can see Dr. Anush, who is now a professor at IIT Bhuvaneshwar. Um, he worked at uh, IIT Karakpur uh, for his PhD. So that was his, this was about uh, his own PhD work. And we talk, talk about uh, here, this paper talks about different historical aspects, historical facts about how pervious concrete was developed, what are the ingredients, 
what are the strength properties and characteristics and many many things a recent publication by one of my new uh, one of my other students at iit kanpur iit tirupati mr ravishesht uh, and my my colleague also is that person now who uh, is a faculty at iit tirupati who works on hydraulics so we have been uh, advising ravishesht and he is now developing an, a, a new form of pervious concrete he'll be finishing within the next 3 months uh, in fact he was supposed to finish but the situation you people understand so we are coming up with new and uh, innovative futuristic designs Uh, of uh, pervious concrete so if you want to talk if you want to understand the sustainability aspects such as clogging phenomenon material characterization advanced and then environmental aspects such as the lca life cycle analysis or let's say ghg emissions please download this paper and review it okay it's a very it's a very new one latest in fact 2020 just last month that we published okay now let's go into uh, where we started with all of this pervious concrete and uh, where are we right now so it started off at iit karakpur uh, under the uh, future of cities mega project okay thanks uh, to the uh, to, to the management and several other researchers who worked on this okay and the, one of the modules or the several modules that we had uh, we had this pervious concrete so we were trying to develop pervious concrete mixed designs mainly targeting three things one hydrological structural and thermophysical two we wanted to understand whether we are able to implement this in the field and demonstrate that our product is a good one number three we we wanted to come back and recommend that there are a few mixtures that are top quality and they can be used for certain applications so these were the three important aspects uh, three important uh, tasks that we undertook within this project now if you look at this so we uh, we undertook about 60 16 to 17 different types of experiments state of the art all of you have done this compressive strength on concrete so we have done we did that compressive strength of uh, pervious concrete we did los angeles abrasion we also did kent bro so we try to understand the raveling aspect right polishing on uh, uh, what happens to the adhesion of cement paste with the aggregate does it stay around then we also did a lot of work on flexural fatigue in fact to mention this to you we were the first people in the world to do this using a machine uh, that's a state of the art and we were able to uh, get the values there as well then we also did the x-ray microtomography i mentioned to you i showed you a picture right we used the facilities that are available at iri karapur then we did constant head variable head permeability tests to understand the range of permeability with this material and then we did some thermophysical properties as well so we characterized the material for its thermophysical uh, properties such as specific heat capacity thermal conductivity emissivity now let's look at some numbers that we actually got okay when we talk about the compressive again if you go back to this uh, this state of the art you should be able to get many many values but i'll just give you some ranges that we got when we talk about the compressive strength the numbers were anywhere between 15 and 35 mpa So you can target M15, M20, M25, M30, and M35. M35 is probably difficult, but definitely we were able to achieve M30, and we are now trying to enhance that number also by many fold with uh, with new technologies that we have. So I will I'll share those details probably in the next session whenever we we meet again, maybe in the next six months because we have we are we are still undertaking that research. Okay, um, you talk about the. permeability so these are the two major aspects right so permeability was anywhere between 0.1 and 4 cm per second you look at the numbers if you talk, talk about cm per second the numbers were uh, as large as 70 to 80000 mm per hour there are some places in orissa and some places in the other parts of the country where we can expect about 1500 to 2000 or maybe even 3000 to go to chirapunji more than 3000 mm per uh, per year right annual precipitation is 3500 mm karakpur is not different so we have about 1500 mm per year there as well so this number that we got permeability with our pervious concrete was anywhere to the tune of 60 to 70000 mm per hour not year hour millimeter per hour so we were able to get that permeability so it's a very uh, intense permeable material that's a, that's something that you should be aware of and because of the interconnected pore structure that was possible with us okay and uh, flexural fatigue and so we also were able to understand that the the uh, 
the raveling aspect or what we call the abrasion resistance coming from this material was also on the lower side and it met the specifications. And some of physical properties I'll share with you some details later. Okay, now let's talk about the three different uh, uh, studies that we did construction demonstration. So I, I'll not talk about how we prepared the samples because all those things are available in several publications that we have done. So you can go there and then uh, but probably I thought I should share with you some sustainable construction practices. Right. One uh, section, the first section, in fact, that we did in the country was on campus IIT Karakpur in Kendri Vidyalaya. It's a school there. Uh, we got about 30 meter long section. And what our uh, good friend uh, Anush did was he had about 54 combinations of uh, pervious concrete. Um, what, we, what we did, we boiled that down to 18 sections. Okay, and that came about because of the statistical uh, study that we did. We, we could not test. We, it's, you see, it's not it's not economical to test all the 54 mixture. It'll take about 10-15 years to do that, right? So statistical experiments that we uh, the conducted factorial experiments and the Taguchi method that we adopted, we boiled it down to 18 mixtures. So finally, we had 18 combinations. If you recall from the slide that I show, shared with you. It is the, the range of aggregate sizes are anywhere between 9.5, I'm sorry, 4.75 and 19 millimeter. You see that it could be a binary, it could be a ternary, it could be a quaternary gradation. So 25% of each of the four, or you can have one single gradation of 4.75 millimeter that helps us get higher porosity, but then you might be compromising on the, uh, on the, on the, strength characteristics. So he came about with 18 uh, combinations at the end of the day. And then when we wanted to build the test sections, we said, okay, we'll take the top six out of the 18. So finally, what we did, we had six combinations and we had three replicate slabs, each of them being 2.5 by 3.5 meters. That was a slab dimension that we had. And we had 18 slabs, so three slabs per mix type, 3 times 6, 18. And I'll share with you more, more uh, pictures later. Okay, so the final design was like this, pervious concrete layer, 150 millimeters, on top of a fine sand layer, which was also a semi permeable membrane. Okay, and then we had this subgrade. So natural soil subgrade, we didn't change anything of this. So we actually brought in the fine sand layer. Now, one important aspect is, if you are building a pervious concrete, make sure that you have a semi permeable membrane. Okay? It's an important aspect. Okay, so pervious concrete layer, and then on top, on top uh, below that there is a semi-permeable membrane. Below that you have a subgrade. Very important. You have to have a semi-permeable membrane, otherwise you'll not be able to get that water recharge going down. Now, now let's talk about this. Let's see where we have. So this is the. Uh, uh, so this is the this is the, uh, the the stretch that we got from IIT Karakpur, a 30 meter long stretch, and we have a 3.5 meter width of the section, right? So this is the uh, stretch that we got. Then what we did, we removed the soil subgrade. We were trying to prepare the surface, very important, correct? So we went all the way down to about 16 inches. That's something important. Please understand. So 16 inches down and then we found the natural soil subgrade that is already there. So over the last 50 years, they have been actually filling that natural soil subgrade. It's a campus, they have been filling it. So we went all the way down and you see this is a top fill material, then it kept on going downwards. So we removed until then. Then we compacted, as you can see in the next, next slide here, you see one ton manual roller that we had. Okay, so we compacted that, soil was compacted, as you can see here. Okay, then you can see our own friend, good friend Anish, who was collecting the samples, soil samples to check for three important properties, density, moisture content, and CBR. We needed this to understand that the soil subgrade will not deform under the loading of the slab by itself. So slab weight can start also can also help in deformation, right? That's an important aspect. So please, please make sure you check for your soil properties as well before you start placing your pervious concrete. 
Okay, now next layer, as I mentioned to you, is fine sand layer. So that was about uh, 75 millimeter. And that was also compacted, as you can see here, being compacted there. Okay, final product. The pervious concrete, the first slab starts here, last slab ends here. 18 slabs, three replicates, six types of mixtures, six times three, 18. Now there is one small slab here that you are able to see, I'm sure. That is the, that is not a pervious concrete per se, because what the contractor wanted us to do is to build a control section. That was an important aspect too. Now whenever you have this pervious concrete, we wanted to have a control mixture, which was not pervious concrete because we had all kinds of sieve sizes that we had. And then we created a mixture. We placed it here to make sure to understand the contrast between the pervious and non-pervious concrete. Okay. So we had this 18 slabs there with this control. Now another view of the pervious concrete section. And this is this was basically placed to utilize this for these for uh, bicycle parking and scooter parking two wheeler. Here is a chronology of the uh, sections that we built. Okay, so we had this compaction. Then we collected some samples. We also collected pervious concrete uh, cores from the field. Okay, so and then you can also see our friend uh, uh, curing it using curing compound. Yeah. Now, let's go into the, uh, the performance aspects. So in July 2017, so in June 2017, we built that exactly about uh, three years ago, three and a half, uh, three years plus, uh, when Anush was finishing and I was leaving for IIT Tirupati. Okay, so we had these sections built in June and then in July, we had about 55 hours of incessant rainfall in Karakpur. Some of you who are familiar with Karakpur, it can rain for two, three, four days continuous. Okay, and most of the places that is there in, in Karakpur are, per, are, are pervious naturally because a lot of greenery is there. It's an excellent, beautiful campus that you can see. But this particular place, not even a small drop of water stagnated, except for some, you know, the, 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 the sand particles or the soil particles came and stagnated. Otherwise, this portion also was fully permeable. You can see that here, you see, not even a single drop of water stayed there. Right? Okay, now I mentioned to you, there's one slab which is not pervious concrete, that got inundated. All the others were free, no problem, fully permeable, water went through downwards. You can see here, water, so it's, it was taken during rain, you can see that here, right? Okay, in January 2018, when there was no maintenance accorded to that, some portions got clogged. I mentioned to you, if you don't maintain, that's what happens. Okay, and July 2018 still being used at that time, but you can see that grass has started to grow around. Okay, very important to understand that you have to maintain, otherwise, you'll start seeing you know plantations growing around. This is a porous material. What happens is you can start seeing the plants grow from bottom up, grass can start growing, going bottom up. So, make sure you maintain this section very well. Anyway, now. I mentioned to you that some thermophysical properties that uh, we we uh, we measured you can see that this material pervious concrete stands out because its specific heat capacity higher the better so it's much much higher than even the conventional Portland cement concrete and the asphalt it's a good sign similarly thermal conductivity so one of the things that you might want to think about is if your thermal conductivity of this material is so high you should be able to generate electricity. If you're able to store heat there, you collect it some, from some means, through some means, and then start utilizing that for electricity purposes. So some people have tried that around the world. Okay, probably start using piezoelectric crystals or something like that. We, we, are, we are yet to discover those and we have to try that. But that's a very good research topic if you really wish to work on. Okay, so please make utilization of this material in terms of good quality research and high quality high end research right now thermal diffusivity diffusivity also was less which is a good sign something similar to asphalt so it diffuses very rapidly which is a good thing right it doesn't simply stay there and then uh, release it out whenever it is required albedo was not very far from what we had concrete so albedo can be increased further if you start using light colored aggregates 
so we 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 had some something like a gray color if you want to have a very high reflectance this is the reflect albedo is what you reflect back the number goes anywhere between 0 and 1 the higher the better for reflection right if you want to increase this 0.15 to even point 2 that is a conventional concrete you could you can start using light colored as we get okay that is another research scope for you people okay here is what i showed you in the beginning and this is a a good publication that we have from in ac where we could see that the temperature differential between uh, between asphalt and concrete both pervious concrete and the uh, conventional concrete that's here you can see it's about 10 celsius and this is exactly what i told you with the uhi phenomenon right anywhere between 3 and 5 celsius between the urban and the rural setup so that that that's what is the final thing and then if you would wish to read more about our uh, characterization test that we did and the values please go to some of the uh, publication that we've had you can get more data more uh, uh, information about the work now coming to the second demonstration section we had uh, so tirupati is a smart city the uh, it's one of the 100 smart cities designated by government of india so we went to the commissioner so commissioner actually called the iit tirupati faculty to uh, to provide some solutions for smart cities so one of the solutions i thought we should give them was this uh, uh, pervious concrete because you know there's a lot of inundation taking place a lot of water stagnation around the city when there is rain and there's precipitation so what we did we requested uh, the commissioner then commissioner and now he's a collector in one of the other districts in ap state he said okay we'll give you a 4 meter by 120 meter long section it was it was three uh, four times longer than what we had at karakpur 30 meter in karakpur 2.5 meter wide there so we got a larger section here so we had 25 to 30 so, so we have so we got it inaugurated within one day so one of the other things that you might want to uh, know is if you build a pervious concrete today you should be able to open it for traffic tomorrow because you know it is it is very porous so you should be able to apply curing compound and accelerate the rate of hydration and then also cure it quickly so we had the collector come and inaugurate uh so pradeep nagar uh, chitur district collector we also had published this because we had 25 different slabs we did a lot of experiments on that i'll show you more so here is the chronology so we had the uh, the soils of great prepared something like this okay we have our uh, students and my colleagues here and then soil was being prepared you can see the other uh, picture here 5.5 so we got a instead of 4 4 meter we got 5 and 1/2 was enhanced later okay 5.5 meter by uh, 120 meter long section from one gate to the other so it is right, right now it's there in municipal corporation of tirupati if someone happens to visit tirupati please call me or email me we will take you to this site and show you how it is functioning so unlike the karakpur thing we had a granular sub base cores layer why because we wanted to have car parked cars parked there or maybe even larger vehicles come there so the commissioner requested us can you design it for a certain uh, traffic he said yes he said that's what i told you in the beginning you should be targeting the client if the client wants you to build a section for low volume roads do that design have different layers you can even go for a thinner section you want to build it for car parking you should be able to design that and so forth so here we have a granular base course so base is gsb in fact and it was 250 mm in thick okay and then we also built a small test section here okay on the same campus and we embedded pipes below this gsb so we could collect water here in these sites that's what i told you in the beginning if you want to check for its water quality and how does it percolate you can do that with your experiments in the field and in the lab so here it is 15 cm again pervious concrete on top of the 25 now out of the six top in that that we got in karakpur we chose the topmost the best one the rank number 1 here in tirupati just wanted to try with only one kind of a pavement type and that was 15 cm upon two, uh, 25 cm of granular sub base there and then we come back to subgrade there and then we also had some test sections 1 meter by 1 1.2 meter in fact the four test slabs okay, this became our lab in the field okay we also had pipes embedded within this and then now you see you see the chronology so we had the gsb layer no sophisticated equipment we used the in situ mixer we used super plasticizer obviously okay and then we built alternate slabs 
and you can see a plate vibrator being used to compact now one very important construction practice if you are using a plate vibrator unlike this creed for uh, vibration and compaction our suggestion is please use this plate vibrator and run it only once so if it's a 5 meter long slab or a 4 meter within 60 seconds you should finish your task otherwise it will start to get clogged even the cement paste starts to go down something very important aspect please remember that right okay now um, yeah. so you can see that here this is the slab that was being built and one of our students there very happy uh, looking at uh, the new thing like a lot of people came there to look at. so you can see a lot of uh, alternate slabs being built and we finished this entire 120 meter stretch within one and a half days just one and a half days so we were able, we were successful in finishing it so here is the uh, the final thing where we had uh, um yeah so i'm just i'm sorry i had to put the uh, plug in uh, the charger yeah so we had this uh, cured within one and a half days and then we had the collector come and inaugurate there right so more than 25 slabs each of them being over 5 meter by 4 uh, and 1/2 uh, something like that okay equal equally placed and then you see here you we are using cars our own cars my colleagues came there the iit tirupati director was there so if you wish to see how we constructed the chronology please go to youtube and then just type in sustainable sustainable pervious concrete iit tirupati you should be able to get a full video of about 5 minutes uh which we uh, uploaded on the uh, youtube so you will see that we had uh, um bill the, the chronology of the billing of this right okay and then out of uh, 25 slabs after one year of service we saw that the there were about 50 more than 50% so about 60% of the slabs and i say 60% uh, approximately 16 out of 25 slabs had still excellent permeability when i say excellent permeability the numbers ranged between 0.5 and 2 cm per second they still existed okay this this we did it in 2019 we took to be readings this year we could not do it because of the lockdown and many other situations and then some and most of them were good in the next 50% fair and only three slabs out of 25 were poor because during construction so that's what i told you should be very careful with water cement ratio that's a good construction practice quality control is don't go beyond the water cement ratio of 0.33 so there is a magic number 0.32 0.33 okay so the the number water cement ratio can vary between 0.27 and 0.45 the magic number anywhere between 0.32 and 0.33 so that is the that is what we have been using and we were successful if you use slightly more in one of the slabs this is what happens the cement paste also starts to clog the pores very important to understand that okay so here are the numbers that we actually got average compressive strength 21 so we targeted m20 we were able to achieve m21 25 also was there so it's an average value of all the 25 slabs porosity 25% so we targeted 15 15 we were also able to see some of them which were 40% 40% porosity also was available Infiltration rate 0.11 to 0.32 centimeter per second. If you just calculate, you'll get a humongous amount of number. Huh? So please, uh, if you calculate millimeter per hour, they are very very large. Maybe 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 millimeter per hour. So they're very big numbers. Can you can go to this particular publication and find more about what we did with the field. Okay, and the third thing that I thought I'll share with you is a very recent one, just last year. Uh, IIT Tirupati campus. So we have a, a campus coming up 500. 50 acres plus uh, campus um, uh, a green campus right now we have a transit campus we call it it used to be called transit now it's a permanent thing this leads to the national highway okay so we have solar panels all over so that is the one which is providing us the electricity is a sustainable campus there a lot of greenery around okay and we have the hostel blocks which are beautiful there okay so we got a small section there again 50 meter so we wanted to understand the hydrological property so we uh, we had one btech student pranav chandra okay who um, who happened to do his btech at iit tirupati the first batch uh, iit tirupati btech and then now he continued on with us uh, with my group to continue on with his mtech program okay so we 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 
we spent a lot of amount. In fact, we spent close to about 10 to 12 lakhs on this pervious concrete because we actually did a lot of work here. And I'll share with you some details. So 50 meter section, okay, about six meter wide. You can see here uh, 6.4. Uh, so the, essentially we got about six meter uh, carriageway of pervious concrete. Here's a preparation of subgrade, not going to details, you know it very well. And then we placed again a granular subbase course, 250 millimeter. On top of that, we had a 150 millimeter uh, pervious concrete. Okay, now we had dual membranes also placed so that we wanted to collect water in these sites. And I'll share with you some videos after this presentation. You can see one of my PhD students here working on this. So we also did a very important task here. We tried RMC, ready mix concrete. Okay, that method also we tried and we were very successful. In fact, I'm happy to say this, probably we are the first people in the country to use RMC for pervious concrete. And we were very successful in getting a very homogeneous, unicolor, single color uh, uh, pavement section. And I'll share with you some pictures right now. Okay, so that's what we did. We also used in situ, obviously we did that. You can see a plate vibrator that was being used. Now, very important aspect is uh, here. Yeah, so here you can see curing being done and then we had one section, the left, left side that you can see in this, uh, let me take a pointer, yeah. So here on this left side, you can see that they were all constructed using RMC. All of these, or at least most of them were constructed using in situ mixer. Okay, and we were very consistent, so we, we had a very good consistency across on this side than on this side, okay. Now, something important here, and you can also try this. So let's say this is pervious, but we wanted to collect water. If you recall from the Municipal Corporation of Tirupati sections, we, we placed embedded some pipes, right? What we did here, we embedded some rings. Apart from a, a few pipes here in the full scale infiltration test lab, which was about two and a half by three meter, we also embedded some rings, infiltration rings, that actually helped us calculate how much water is going out of the concrete, pervious concrete surface. So I'll show you a very uh, beautiful video that we took. So here is the piping system. And then upon this, we just simply place the pervious concrete there. Okay, here are the rings made up of uh, <coughs> rubber uh, membranes, okay, hard rubber in fact. You can see that there are different sizes that we had all the way starting from 30 centimeter until about uh, 600 millimeter. Okay, 20 times that size. We were trying to understand what is the actual size of the ring that should be used in the field to capture the true value of infiltration rate. There is an ASTM standard which says that 30 centimeter is the actual number. Okay. And you can see here, so we place those rings and then we put the pervious concrete on top of that. We had these rings already embedded, right? And then we collected some field cores. As usual, we wanted to do a lot of work in the lab. So the numbers varied, the, the strength varied anywhere between M10, so it came down, okay? M10, between M10 and M25. That's the number that we had from these sections, okay? Final product. That, that you see. So this side you see very beautiful consistent color because we used uh, RMC and it was very smooth RMC uh, thing and then here there were a lot of in situ mixer that was used right. Now this is being used for ambulance parking, car parking, what not. Still being used, no problem whatsoever, very good permeability and we do a lot of compressive strength test and many many other things as usual and then surface infiltration I mentioned this to you it says 30 centimeter so we want to check for that so we embedded rings and you see here 580 millimeter also we had so 30 millimeter uh, 30 centimeter until about 580 so you see that exactly what ASTM says we were able to uh, get that number here it was around 270 270 millimeter was the magic number that we got wherein that was a true number of the infiltration rate coming from the lab so we tested the samples in the lab we tested some in the field and we wanted to correlate both and what we found in the lab or what we found in the field were very highly correlated. 270 meter, millimeter and that's exactly what we found with ASTM. So ASTM also accepted our publication saying that, okay, this is exactly how we should be doing in the field across the world. Anyway, so now something to think about, environmental impacts due to PC technology. 
Okay, so we thought, okay, let's also understand the GHG emissions and the LC aspect coming from the pervious concrete construction. So people have always asked us, what is the cost of your slab? So if you look at the number uh, based on AP uh, schedule of rates, Andhra Pradesh schedule of rates, we had 1000 rupees. So including the labor charge and the material cost, transportation included 1000 rupees for a one meter by one meter by 0.15. Millimeter meter, uh, section, okay. In comparison with uh, a conventional concrete of the same dimension, 1200-1300 rupees. Now, this number will vary. Don't get me wrong if I say these numbers. So these numbers can vary state to state, region to region. But still, I can tell you the pervious concrete is about 10 to 20 percent cheaper depending on the place. How? Because we are not using sand in this. So the amount of uh, the material that you require for sand, uh, the, the amount of sand required is simply eliminated. It's a no fines concrete. So where is the actual cost coming then? It's coming from additional cement paste plus super plasticizer. So if you are able to come up with a new innovative material that doesn't require super plasticizer, then I think you, are, you, can, you can even reduce the amount further per slab. Okay, so now let's look at something that, that is slightly advanced in terms of understanding assessment, life cycle analysis impacts. So what we did, so this is a published document, you can go to a paper, I'll, I'll share with you that if you wish. Uh, what we did, we went to our own construction contractor who did the job for us in Tirupati. So we compared the in C2 mixing versus the RMC. So we wanted to check what is the GHG and embodied energy coming out of this. So look at these numbers, RMC versus in situ, per, uh, pervious concrete, Portland cement concrete. Okay, you see the numbers here. It's about 50 into 10 power 3 megajoules per kilometer. Pervious concrete versus PCC. It's a big number. Please understand. 15 to 10 power 3. Right? It's a big number, 50,000. Megajoules per kilometer is a big number. So please understand that you can actually reduce the embodied energy because of this. And these are actual numbers. We simply did not calculate using in, using a software tool. No, we did this based on the inputs received from the contractor, the, the amount of material he used. We were there to, to check for that, not just getting the numbers. It's not a secondary source. So we went there, we collected the data. Now, if you look at the carbon uh, GHG emissions, that also is reduced. It's about six to 7 into 10 power 3 kg CO2 equivalent per kilometer. Now if you look at the lane kilometers that we have, so when uh, Mr. Sujit presented in the beginning 60, uh, 6 million lane kilometers in the country, right? That's second largest in the world after the US. You see, if you calculate that, I think you are saving n amount of money. And I'll show, share with you the next slide. So if you go to this publication, you'll get to know how did we calculate all those things, right? In situ, slightly reduced because there is no transportation cost. It's all made in situ, right? Okay. Now, this is the 3% difference there, which is still substantial for us. Okay. Now coming to the financial implications. Cost, overall cost, not the initial cost, okay? Please note here, between in situ pervious concrete and RMC, we are look, looking at RMC versus in situ. In situ pervious concrete, in situ Portland cement. You can see that 3 into 10 power 5 rupees per kilometer saving. That's substantial. Please understand. It's substantial. Now, if you look at our own pervious concrete in situ versus RMC, Okay. I'm not advocating any method. I'm just telling you these are the differences that we got based on our calculations. You don't have to literally say that, okay, this is the best. This is not the best. No, that's not what I'm trying to tell you here. Please understand. Please note that. We are only telling you that there is a difference of about 8, 7 to 8 into 10 power 5 rupees per kilometer between in C2 and RMC. And we were also able to achieve a smooth finish with RMC, much more good quality and then faster construction and unicolor. Consistency was very good. Now, the quality control is the key thing here. So, as there is a quality control uh, talk coming up sometime this week, you should also appreciate that quality control here also is a major input in getting these numbers. So, we only did the cradle to gate 
when you say gate until the placement there is another approach which we call cradle to grave which uh, which will tell you after the service is over 12 to 15 years or maybe 20 years that we cannot do it right now because we haven't seen a section in india that has lasted for 15 years yet with pervious concrete so we have to wait on it we can accelerate the process probably we are trying to do that and we will get you the answers within the three four within the next three four months very soon so if you please go to this uh, publication you should get more but still four percent right rmc four percent lower than that now some future district designs for you okay before i uh, stop this about about pervious concrete you can go with two layer something for you to think about you can start using geotextile to collect water so this will arrest so you can collect water here you can, you can also prevent some some cracks coming from bottom up right and then you don't need to provide any slope zero percent slope that's an advantage for you so drainage can occur and we also tried this we've already tried the the pipes below the sub base layer below the pervious concrete you can also try that try it out it can become water recharging stations for you water harvesting so that's what the the government wants us to do and something that's important that we should definitely do it right okay since so these are some of the places where you can apply low medium parking lots shoulders medians berms pathways the residential streets we have tried all of these in fact i should say except for the driveways we are trying that very soon and then composite structures two layered could be something else we are trying that also it could be a drain cover that you see for footpaths right okay now last thing another five minutes about the management thing what we are doing and i'll share more details probably in the days to come uh, again maybe another session on asset management so what we have been doing is to okay so the first thing there's a big state of the art that we recently published just last uh, in couple months ago i should say a very recent one one of my other students species students who's working on this payment asset management uh, you can go to this automation in construction uh, journal and then download this it's a very high impact journal where we talk about the historical facts of pavement asset management development across the world including in india and then the various tools that are available right now to do the asset management okay to perform asset management to the best of our ability including the economic viability and uh, coming up with maintenance strategies okay now you people are very familiar of with this plot right Uh, present serviceability index versus uh, h pavement condition versus h if you don't do anything for the for the entire design life the the serviceability simply drops down and then you reach a, a terminal serviceability index when you definitely have to do something to bring that pavement section up to the condition that you desire so so that it could be used further right so there is a there is a vehicle and you will be surprised if i don't if i tell you that this vehicle has been used across the country okay uh, this was uh, bought from uh, uh, i think uh, arrb australian road research board you can see the arrb here and new zealand so people uh, 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 the, the agencies highway agencies have been using this cross including orissa in fact orissa has also used this i'm sure there is a lot of data so what we did we approached ap state and you can see uh, ap personnel here he brought this van to iit tirupati you can see iit tirupati director me and my student my other colleagues here um, uh, they brought this van and shared with us the details then we got a lot of data from them and i'll tell you the number of data points that we have right now to do research it's about 15 lakh data points 1.5 million data points that we are using to develop a pavement asset management for the entire state of ap 13 districts okay for the state highways not the national highways but the state highways obviously and um, what we are doing you can see so this is exactly the data that they have i'm i'm sure you were able to see this moving pictures in fact this is exactly how they collect the video okay there are three different cameras which collect data on on the sides and in the center and what it is collecting it has all these forms raveling bleeding pothole dirt and many 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 other things okay there are more than 18 distresses extent and severity now what we wanted to do was to understand the okay these are other things that that are also there in that uh, data set what we wanted to do is to develop a pothole detection quantification and maintenance system so we also published this document if you wish i'll send this document uh, across to you we recently published this in the springer nature uh, uh not even proceeding okay and um, what is a pothole 
I am not going to talk about this. You people are very familiar. You have seen these pictures around and you have seen it across the country, right? So what we wanted to do with, with that data set, we had more than uh, 1500 images. In fact, there are about 600,000 images and we collected, uh, we collected uh, approximately 1500 images um, for our use for this particular study. 600,000 images out of that 100,000 images are the ones that are having distresses. The other 500,000 images do not have. So you can imagine the amount of data that we have. I'm sure the other states also have this. If you are able to get hold of that data, you should be able to do a lot of wonders with your research, especially with asset management. Okay, so we collected that data, images, and then we came up with a, a tool using artificial neural network. I'm going to share with you in a, in a few slides and then come up with the patching area that is required to fill those potholes. That was the major objective here. So that's why, so pothole detection, so our program was able to detect our software, okay? And then quantify how much area plus how much material is required to maintain that pothole. So we were able to do this and we have published this document and there are many more publications coming along and I'll, I'll share with you. I told you 600,000 images. You can imagine 6 lakh images we have across this state. We should be able to do a lot of work. Not just pothole, there are other uh, uh, distresses as well. So here is the uh, publication. You can go there. It's a lecture notes. In fact, we also presented this in the conference in Switzerland. Uh, of course, it was an online conference. We could not go there. Okay. Okay, so what did we do? We used something called YOLO V3. This is an open source architecture. I'm not going to details of this because you can read through. But anyway, so YOLO V3 architecture is an open source. We had this image data set coming from AP, RDC, AP, Road Development Corporation. What we did, we segmented that based on our own inputs into the architecture. And then we bound that pothole with a limit. Okay. Then what we did, we calculated, the quant we quantified the extent, we calculated the extent, the length and the width, and also a three dimensional, how much is the depth. Then we calculated the area of the patching required, and then we came up with the amount of material that is required to patch these potholes. That is the whole idea here, that is the framework. So here you can see chronology. So here is the original image coming from the database. We pre-processed it so that we could see it better. So here is a pothole, right? From the image, you cannot simply say, oh, this is 3.5 uh, centimeter by 4. You cannot do that. You'll have to quantify that. That's exactly what our uh, architecture was doing. So what we did, we classified the potholes into three classes coming from nine, low severity based on the depth. Okay, this is coming from the ASTM standard. We already have a standard to classify the pothole. So what we did, we said, no, having nine will simply enhance our, uh, our time to analyze. So we came up with three of them, low severity, medium and high. Okay. And then, yeah, that's exactly what I said. So ASTM standard is already there. Then what we did, we took that image. You see, this is the actual image. We used a tensor quantity. You can see that here, tensor quantity, right? A times B times seven. Now, what is this? So this is the width, length, and seven pixels. So you, you basically, what you're trying to do is you can have seven different portions where you can calculate. It's a combination, right? That is what you should understand. And then we come up with the patch area. So that's what is the W times H. And this is the centroid from where you can calculate all of these. So here is the data dimensionality coming from the tensor. You can calculate the area and finally what uh, so here it is the here is the current so here is the image that we have 2.625 by 3.5 let's say is the image you resolve that using the architecture so resolution has to come down so that you should be able to gauge where the pothole is so there are layers within the architecture then what you do you come up with those bounding limits i told you right using the tensor bounding limits back here you so come up with the bounding limits based on the tensor here is the bounding limit and then here is the bounding limit for the pothole. So you can get three things out of this. One, the length and the width of the patch plus 
the seniority class or the amount of material that you require. So output image plus the class label. What is the class label? Something like this, L, M and H. So for this particular picture, we are showing you the low severity. Similarly, we have for the others, medium, high and many, many other things, right? Finally, you get something like this and then you got the pothole detected. Now you just have to come up with the solution, how much material is required to patch. That's what we did here. You see what we did? So portion, we have the image size P, area of patching is the P. Now, how much is the material that is required to patch this? Q. There's a factor and this factor based on some of the construction engineers that might be there in this audience, you can have 15 to 25% more because you know, when you start compacting, you need a lot of extra material to start with, right? So 15 to 25% and this factor varies depending on how much is the width and length of the pothole, how much is the dimension basically. So pothole class that we could get it from our architecture plus the uh, multiplied by the P value which is the segmented portion or the image size. So we came up with this uh, solution. Now we are able to exactly tell you if there's a pothole on road, how much material is required to patch it. So here's the chronology. Okay. Again, very similar thing that, that I mentioned to you. So we came up with this PDQMS detection quantification and now how did we measure our confidence so based on the uh, current literature in fact now not current anymore because now we have superseded that so there is something called the mean average precision that measure coming from our image uh, processing and the analysis there's one literature reported in 19 just last year we reported in 2020 slightly better than what they have in fact now we have enhanced this also to about 95 percent so we have been adding the images so we are coming closer to 95-96% uh, of uh, the confidence. It's a good thing, right? So whatever we are able to predict, that is exactly what is there in the field. You cannot simply go to the field every kilometer, right? So we should be able to collect these images coming from the van that is running. You get the images, pre-process it, pre-process it, and then go to the image uh, architecture. It could be YOLO V3 or some other software that is there in the open source for that matter get the bounding limits, get the quantification and then patch it. You see how beautiful that that's the way uh, that uh, that we uh, the image uh, the, the asset management has to be really brought about so that you can utilize the artificial intelligence, the deep learning techniques that we have or the artificial neural network. So they are the buzzwords right now. Right. OK, so we were able to do this with 41 images. We have added about 1000 plus images already. So the number has gone to about 95 percent, literally 95 percent. OK. Share more detail. Now, what are the future expectations? The last slide before I show you um, something about our own research. Um, so please, please, uh, please understand that this is something very important where we have a very good collaboration between the academia and the industry. Otherwise, what happens is you keep on doing your work in the lab, you keep on publishing, whether it is going to the real practice is, is, it will become a very big question mark. Right. So please start fostering collaboration between this. So uh, we recently got an NHI project. You'll be happy to note this. Uh, National Highways Authority of India gave us a research project to modify the IRC 37 guidelines. So we have come up with that uh, uh, project and we will be running it through the next three years. So we will be revising the IRC 37 guidelines for the National Highways, obviously. Uh, so that is a uh, that's that's where we are going with the academic uh, uh, progress into the industry collaboration, right? So we, we have to utilize the industry. So it's a client-based approach. Plus, if you recall from the asset management that I shared with you, APRDC is very, very much in touch with us to, uh, to get the asset management tool from our site, toolkit. So please try to do this field design specifications and laboratory correlations have to be done. Otherwise, you cannot come up with a very good quality specification that is closely simulating what we do in the lab, right? And then some of the things that we you can always think about is the LCA, life cycle analysis, life cycle cost, benefit cost ratios, management and econometrics. All of these are part of the assets, right? payment assets. And then again, I showed you some pervious concrete. There could be also asphalt, asphalt rubber, many, many other things. Okay, here is here are some glimpses of our, of our lab. We uh, developed this lab. Um, at IIT Tirupati uh, within the record time of 10 months. Um, so three, three plus, four crores, in fact, I should say. 
So we have a state of the art lab right now. Uh, we have a very good, a strong group, advanced pavement systems, more than uh, five PhDs plus uh, uh, several MTech and uh, BTech students working with us. Okay, so we can do all kinds of fundamental research on asphalt, cement and cement concrete with our uh, labs. Okay, we have all the equipment. Plus we have a, a state of the art UTM, which is one of the best in the country right now. Okay, we spent about one plus crore on this machine, which can do all kinds of experiments, creep, fracture, fatigue, uh, tension. You ask it, you can do it, okay? So here you can see a glimpse of our instruments. And these are some of the research studies that we are undertaking right now. We, we shared with you the pervious concrete, the asset management, and this is what we are doing with IRC 37. We are trying to come up with a very robust performance criteria for both rutting and fatigue cracking uh, with actual test section. So we, we were now given, uh, we are now given 200 kilometer of roadway stretch near Tirupati, uh, between Tirupati and Madras, Tirupati and Chennai, one, 140 kilometers plus, Redigunta and uh, Naidupeta, these are two different places, 60 plus 140, 200 kilometers. Um, uh, we have an MOU with NHAI. So we are able to use those, uh, use those sections for our studies. So several uh, students are working on this. And then we are also synthesizing a warm mix asphalt additive. So that's something that you can think about, right? To reduce the production temperature of asphalt. And then hydrological characteristics. We talked about this clogging and many, many other things. Asset management, definitely. Please think about that. Uh, and then new asphalt rubber. So this is what I have been doing for the last several years. So we are also coming up with some uh, new pothole patching materials uh, for, uh, for the government. So thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, I, I, I'll be remiss if I don't acknowledge my very good colleagues, very good co-workers, colleagues uh, who have been working with me for the last several, several uh, years. So MHRD, definitely ME now, Administration, Heidi Karpati, Tirupati, uh, Municipal Corporation, who gave us uh, uh, a small section to start with, APRC, who have been giving us the data, right, and mm -hmm. then several my, several my colleagues there, and several students. So now I'll stop sharing this. Oh, before I stop sharing, I want to show you a couple of videos, if that's okay with you, Sujit. Yes, yes, you can continue, sir. Yeah, so I'll just uh, show a couple of videos about this pervious concrete. You'll be happy to uh, see how we built this. Okay, if you recall from our uh, discussion, we embedded the pipes and rings. You see that here. So you pour water on that ring. It simply comes out um, of the pipes. Right, you can see that here. Right, I'll just share with you once again. Just you can see that, you know, uh, it's coming there out of the pipes. We embedded those pipes just below the previous concrete. Okay, and then I'll show, show, uh, show you one more video. And yeah, this is another video where you can see Yeah, you can see that pipe here, ring there, and then water uh, coming out of this pipe. Let me repeat. See, there's another ring where you can, I'm sorry. You can see water coming from, uh, from the bottom there. It's an actual section that we built. You can see that there, right? You can try this. It's not difficult to do. Absolutely easy. You can start uh, designing it. And this is the, pervious, this is the uh, permeability test that we conducted in our lab on a slab. You can see water simply coming out uh, from bottom, uh, top, up, top to bottom. Okay, and then one more video of uh, the double layered uh, pervious concrete that we have uh, uh, created, right? It comes down, you can see there, uh, just below. Start seeing now in a minute, in a, in a few seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So there, double also works. Yeah, there are larger aggregates here and smaller aggregates on the top. So that gives us the uh, leverage of utilizing. And then this is an actual section that we constructed in Municipal Corporation, Europati. Water doesn't stagnate there. There you go. 
one more last video before I wind up. Um, yeah, here you can see. So there is no stagnation whatsoever. These are the sections that we will. So uh, that's about the presentation. Sujit, over to you. I hope I didn't okay. get too much. Just an honor of video, sir. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Yeah. Uh, yep. So, thank you, sir, uh, for giving a nice presentation and a very informative uh, session. Actually, in India, the study is limited actually on pervious concrete, and uh, you are uh, uh, doing uh, many research on pervious concrete and uh, helping the society actually. Actually, this is not only a topic actually, it is helping society how to improve the road infrastructure, and uh, also it will depend, depend upon the Indian economy ultimately. So, uh, thank you, sir. And uh, participants have uh, participants have uh, posted some questions. Yeah. If uh, you will you will give permission, uh, I will take it few sir. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, please, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, sir. Uh, starting with sir, just a small question first. Uh, sir, a uh, pervious concrete pavement, as uh, it will be used in a low traffic area and high traffic area, or both. As of now, um, it can be used only for low to medium. High traffic, we are we are coming up. We are coming up with that uh, solution very soon. As of now, M30 is the one that you can achieve. If you want to go with M40, M50, uh, you have to wait. You have to wait on it. Oh, okay, okay, sir. Sir, another problem is there. Uh, in one of your uh, slides, you have written uh, 150 mm thickness and below that 70, 75 mm fine sand layer is there. After that, subgrade is there. Okay. Right. If subgrade, if, if the if CBR value of the subgrade is more than 20% or 30%, then it's okay. If, if there is a black cotton soil, let's consider okay. black yeah. cotton soil yeah. or CBR value is very less, yeah. then how to mitigate, how to take that load actually, try vehicle load? Yeah, so you, you have to definitely go with the stabilization if possible. You know that 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 will help you uh, do that mechanical. We act, in fact we uh, when we had this uh, uh, Karakpur section, we did mechanical stabilization using the roller. So something like that has to be done before you embark upon the pervious concrete. Don't please post uh, uh, the uh, you know pervious concrete just above the uh, soil segment assets. It has to be improved before you do this. You have to improve. That has to be done. Okay. Yeah. Oh, after, but, after stabilization? Yeah, after stabilization or do something that can bring it to the CBR value that you desire so and then put a semi permeable membrane. Otherwise, what happens is you will not be able to get the water that you uh, that, that will not percolate downwards. You will have to create side drains. Okay. okay. So semi permeable membrane below pervious concrete is advisable. Okay, sir. Yeah. Sir, another problem, whether it will be low traffic or medium traffic. Uh, uh, if vehicle, vehicle will be moved to move over it, then oil, oil or uh, grease uh, ah, yeah, that's uh, a, yeah, that's from vehicle, uh, th yeah. that, that will be drips into pervious concrete. So, automatically it will make a ah. layer around the particles actually. So, how do you get there? Agreed. agreed. Uh, I don't have an answer to it right now because that's uh, part of future scope. Definitely. Definitely someone has to work on this and I, I don't see a reason why not. Someone has to do this. It's a good question. Okay. Um, I don't have an answer to it. Okay, okay, sir. Sir, another question, a small question. If uh, they, uh, there are some interconnected voids as there, and okay. traffic will move through it, and then uh, for uh, some fine particles or medium-sized particles, that, that will be stuck into the voids. Correct. So uh, then uh, this will close the uh, interconnected pores. So Correct. how water will go through it actually? So, so that's exactly what I said. So we, we need to be maintaining these sections. It's not simply that you build and leave it. It has to be maintained okay. very well. So frequent maintenance may be accorded. 
so for say for example three months once or six months there are a few uh, solutions you can go with uh, if it's a small section you can go with vacuum uh, clean there are some uh, road cleaning equipment that is there available with many of the municipal corporations you can use that frequently uh, without damaging the surface without raveling out the aggregates or okay, okay. the other solution futuristic solution is you create slabs that could be removed washed and placed back people are doing okay. that also paper blocks that is also that is also a good solution Okay, but maintain the system. Yeah. Okay, that is required actually. That is required. That is required. Yeah. That is required. Yeah. Sir, what about uh, its curing period? Oh, if you like cast the porous concrete, generally what will be the curing period actually? No, uh, curing period is not much different than your conventional concrete. We usually do it anywhere between fourteen and twenty-eight days. But you can open it for traffic, minimal traffic only, because you know the the rate of hydration is very fast. The you you're trying to uh, 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 use those admixtures that can help you for that. You can have curing compound that can also help you, and it is already porous. So when you start putting water, it simply drifts down. So it it cures faster. It unlike the conventional concrete, but preferable fourteen to eight twenty eight days. You please wait until that is complete. Then only you go ahead with the traffic. Okay, sir. Uh, Porous concrete pavement can uh, we construct it uh, in that in the area where surface is usually very high. If the embankment height is very high, okay. Uh, When you say above ground water, can, yeah, 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 above ground water. Okay. Means let let uh, the formation level will be let hilly area, sir. In case of hilly area, yeah, if the surface layer is uh, Above the water table or very right. high, right. then can you use porous porous concrete because water will be percolated through it and right. it will direct go to the surface or base layer. Right. So obviously it will damage that part or weaken that uh, base or surface layer. No, that's why I told you the base and sub base also will be semi permeable. It's not going to damage. You are you are, you are looking at what if you are looking at ground water recharge, use it. Hilly regions, I don't think there is a problem except that you know you have lot of uh, slopes anyway, so those things will take care of the groundwater recharge. There is no problem in it. If it, if the if the purpose is to have groundwater recharge, you can use pervious concrete. Okay, okay. sir. So, uh, if uh, pervious concrete will be there, then uh, can we avoid the side drainage? Okay. You can if you if you see if you have a pervious concrete on top of a layer that is not very permeable, you must have side drains to collect water. It's a good practice. Why not collect water? Use it for okay. something else. Sure, you can have a side drain. No problem. It'll simply amount to extra cost. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Sir, uh, nowadays the uh, uh, most of the government of India is doing a, a cement concrete pavement yeah. all over India actually. Uh, For medium traffic, also for uh, low traffic, also. Correct. So, as as per as per your point point of view, whether porous concrete and general PCC will be equivalent durable or uh, can we expect? Man, for low traffic, sir, low traffic. Yeah. On such a low traffic. Yeah. If so I com compare. Yeah. So based on what we have seen across the world, pervious concrete sections with frequent maintenance have lasted for about eight to ten years. Low low volume. Eight to ten years. I have I have seen a section which is twenty year old as well. Not in India, but outside, twenty year old. Okay. So there is there is a possibility that it is equivalent to low volume. High volume, I cannot answer okay. because people have not used uh, okay. pervious concrete in high volume. Okay, okay. So uh, one last question. Yeah. Just outside, outside porous concrete, sir. Yeah. I'll tell you which one is better, sir. Whether flexible pavement or cement concrete pavement, which one you would opt out of? Sir? Because, because, sir. One thing now more things telling or government MHI is telling all roads across India it should be cement concrete pavement and. Uh, How do you, how do you feel, sir? Actually, that um, which one will be better? Right? Yeah. If you recall from the slide where I showed you that LCA embodied energy, okay, okay. okay those yeah, are yeah. the numbers 
that don't tell you which is the best it depends on what is the purpose if you are using okay. okay one of the best solution that i have we have been designing sections across the world what i feel is if you have a very strong concrete base course on top of that if you have a very thin friction course say 25 mm or maybe even 30 40 mm you should be able to get both structural capacity and functional characteristics at the same time they are very good provided there is a good bonding between the asphalt and concrete so a composite structure will provide you a perpetual pavement system i will not say which is a good one out of the two i will only tell you okay. depends on this on the purpose if you are going for a highway suggestion is definitely go with stabilization and then go ahead with the next la- next uh, next layers about okay so i am not going to answer that because it depends on what you are looking at what to do revision will actually help us understand the zonation of the entire country we are looking at various temperatures various uh, moisture conditions various uh, loading conditions so it depends no answer no exact answer to that question depends but a successful system that i have seen is a composite structure cement concrete over asphalt base asphalt concrete friction course over cement concrete base course both of them very very good they are for 50 years in in uh, in place of cement uh, we can use on uh, waste material of course, that, of course. Uh, uh, yeah more, is, more research uh, yeah more research is required we need to you be using lot of waste materials such as recycled aggregates to reduce the cost and then you can also use rubber polymer many many other additives that can enhance the strength properties no doubt but to answer your question with a flexible versus rigid i don't have an answer to it <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice presentation, sir. Thank you. Onne sir. Onne sir. Onne sir. Onne sir. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please conclude. Let's conclude. Uh, can I can I ask you a question? How many how many delegates were there? If I may. Sir, actually, actually, total six hundred fifty participants okay. are there actually. Okay. and uh, all uh, many of the participants across india also from uh, vietnam also from indonesia oh, okay. also from nigeria also from nigeria one of the participant in our screen actually actually he, yeah, but not, he has but not. Faced, yeah. Bernard, yeah yeah he has faced some problem actually for uh, in youtube also he has posed some questions i have converted to you okay. so sir all participants are uh, appreciate, appreciating you and uh, very nice session and nice presentations Thank also you. they have requ- uh, sir they have requested your ppt also we can if, we can share, if, we can share uh, no just sir, just sir, send to my mail and uh, i will share it with them we will we will definitely uh, share and, and one uh, thing one thing i want to conclude before uh, before i you know uh, please please understand that there is no exact solution to all problems it's an open ended exactly. thing and you need to be doing lot of good quality research my experience with international work has been that you start doing lot of good work in the lab let's say 2 years 3 years invest lot of uh, time and energy of course money comes with it definitely do lot of good work in the lab in a controlled environment understand the varied uh, prospects uh, for let's say 3 4 5 years and then come to the field don't place the sections on the field and then start analyzing because that will simply amount to failure and then you will not be able to understand the forensics of it so my my this is my experience do a lot of good work in the lab in the good environment that you have controlled environment you can do a lot of work there then come to the field place it that's what we did we pervious concrete or asphalt rubber or other products that we are developing based on our experience so international experience do good work in the in the in your premises then come over to the field that will help us help everyone build a uh, better quality roads or better infrastructure thank you yes, sir 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 one thing one thing yeah, sure. sir one one for resource uh, research purpose uh, i am asking you a question actually let the uh, porous concrete uh, let the 1980 there is some research on porous concrete you consider any any type of research sir okay 
in 1985 or 1990 now 2020 so uh, research is developing so if i will refer i will refer a research which was done in 1980 is it acceptable or uh, latest research is acceptable if i will consider 1980 let uh, please give some idea absolutely, actually, absolutely. Research, uh, Actually, actually, it's a very, very important question and I will go back to uh, my own experience. You know, there is a textbook called Pavement Analysis and Design yeah, by yeah, Yoder, yeah. Yoder and Witzak. Yes, yes, yes. Witzak was my professor at Arizona State. Okay. Oh. And that, was, that, that book was written in 1975 and it is still yes, being yes. used across the world in 4000 universities. Seriously. Okay. And now, yes. the Asho road test was done way back in 1958, 1962. It still holds good. That's where we got the ideas of how to build now the roads, how to come up with the multi-layer elastic theory. Let's talk okay. about high-speed rail. The first high-speed rail ballastless track was, uh, was uh, I would not say invented, but probably developed in 1975. Still being used. Go back to Burmester's okay. theory, Busanik's theory, they're all way back 1885. We are still using it. Now, please don't discount the fact that with low sophistication those days, they were still able to co coin, come up with the concept. So if you really have to understand the concept, I think you should know the chronology. The whole yeah, of chronology. Yeah. In fact, what we do, what we are doing with pavement asset management, the, the, uh, the oldest book that we have by Ralph Haas on pavement asset management is way back in 1970s. It's still, it's still yes. a popular book. So, yes. please understand that there is the, the time is not the factor. What they did those days and how has it improved, how has it... That's why we have written several state-of-the-art papers. If you look at our own review papers, we go back all the way to 1970s, 1960s. It's an important aspect. Yes. So, research right. is not only latest. So we have sophistication. How does it matter? Are we able to do hand competition of stresses and strains in class? That's more important too. <laughs> not just use can pay, can layer, right? So, we should yeah, be yeah. using, we should be able to think and then put logic to that. So, the, 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 the answer to your question is no. Don't just look at the <laughs> latest references. You have to be looking at. So today I am present. Tomorrow I am past. Exactly. Sir. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so to try to understand this. Yesterday was present for yesterday. Today it is past. So future will become past very soon too. So there. That that's how you create history, right? So you have to understand yeah. that you need to be taking into consideration all the limitations. With humility, let's work on this. I think if you're able to collaborate with people like-minded, without ego problems, we should be able to do better jobs. Sure, sir. Sure. Yeah. That is correct, sir. Yeah. On your side, it is over to you. On your side, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your valuable time. It was a nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I leave now, right? Okay. Yes, thank you, yes, thank you very thank much, Sujit, and thanks to your uh, management, thanks to your team. I wish you good luck for the next four days. I, I also hope that it will be very successful and the uh, participants will take back excellent uh, things out of this. Okay, sir. Thank you, okay. sir. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. thank you, sir. No, no, the, that, uh, uh, so dear participants, all information will be given by WhatsApp and uh, tomorrow probably the session will start at 10.30 am uh, and a YouTube link will be provided to the, provided in WhatsApp too. Also, uh, so very shortly, we will provide the feedback in WhatsApp group only. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bonnard? Hello, Mr. Bonnard? Hello, good morning, sir. Oh, 
प्रति जस्ट यूट्यूब फिनिश जस्ट प्रति यूट्यूब यूट्यूब आई विल टॉक विथ वन नाइट 